Manchester United's Premier League season is pretty much over. I mean, just take a look at the Premier League table. There really isn't much for us to play for anymore. Champions League football looks out of reach, whether that's top four or top five. It doesn't look particularly achievable for us at this moment in time. There's not much to play for. But could that be a blessing in disguise for Eric Ten Hag and this Manchester United side? Does it, does it take the pressure off? The pressure for results? The pressure for points in the Premier League table? Is that all now gone? Does it give Eric Ten Hag the chance to experiment until the end of the season and learn something a little bit different about his players? That could be something which he does towards the end of the season, which actually really propels him forward and his chances of being the Manchester United manager in the long term. Now, what Eric Ten Hag has done for large parts of this season is a sort of trial of fire, in my opinion. He's put the United players into an incredibly exposed system to find out what players are basically good enough in terms of physically, tactically, technically, all of those things to find out which players are good enough. And he could continue to do that. But in my opinion, there isn't really too much to gain if we do that. We've seen it all season. We know who's good enough, who's not at this point. There's not much point. What Eric Ten Hag could do is go to a low block, for example, and keep the goals out out the back, see which of his players can defend and be strong in that way. But again, yeah, there's plus sides to it, but I don't really see the point in doing it. What I would like to challenge Eric Ten Hag to do for the rest of the season, with the pressure of results gone, is play a more attractive brand of football, but also a more sustainable brand of football. Now, yes, we know this United squad isn't perfect for it. We know that it's, it's quite clear for us all to see. But what I would like to see Ten Hag do is go for an 11, which looks something a little bit like this, to find out something different about his players. Which of these players can play in a high line? Which of these players can press high? Which of these players can play in a possession system which gets on the ball? That's what I want to see till the end of the season. The question is, what does it actually look like? So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, jerseyfifa.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone. And now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JERSEYFIFA for 10% off when you order. So in terms of what does the team look like, it looks something like this on paper. The immediate question is, what do we really learn if we use this till the end of the season? One, we could see how good Kampuala really is. Of course, he had a bit of a tricky spell uh, the other day against Bournemouth. He struggled a little bit, felt a little bit sorry for him. But give him another chance, give him another couple of games to see if he can perform. We might eventually get Baran and Lissandra Martinez back. If you'll put them into the team, then do it. But I would like to see Kampuala get some time in this position. I would also like to see Mason Mount come into midfield. He was our big money signing last summer. And still, 10 months on, we don't know if he can play midfield or not. So let's experiment. Let's find out if he can. Yes, unfortunately, it does mean moving Kobe Mainu out of position to a deeper role. But you know what? Kobe Mainu is brilliant on the ball. Let's try him here until the end of the season for the sake of getting Mason Mount into the side. And again, learn something. We still don't know. Can this midfield three work together? Let's try and find out. And then Ahmad on the right wing. Why not give it a go? Why not give it a go? He has tended to perform. I have felt in recent weeks when he has been given a chance from the bench. I think he's done well every time. He works hard out of possession. He's something a little bit different to our other wingers. Why not give him a go in the side? And then the left wing situation. Currently, I've got Marcus Rashford. I was going to go for Garnacho, But after Garnacho's off the pitch stuff the other day, I've taken him out of the team. But let's be honest, those two can just rotate really till the end of the season. But what I want to see is this team given a chance. And not just given a chance, I want them to be given a challenge. Given a challenge, a way of playing football till the end of the season, which I think we all want to see. If Ten Hag can prove that he can do it with a slightly jumbled up squad, again, with the pressure of points gone, if he can prove that he can play football with this, this bunch, then I think that would increase a lot of people's confidence in his ability to do the job in the long term. Now, you might look at the left back position and go, should Wan Saka really be here? I understand that point. I just don't really think we have another option. I think it's too early for someone like Amas. Shaw is still out injured. So I don't know that we have too many other options. So for now, I would stick with him. But what I would like to see is United trying to play the ball out from the back on a regular basis because we haven't seen it this season. We have been a side which often kind of plays the ball out from the back, goes back to Onana and then sends the ball long. Can we actually try and commit to playing the ball out from the back? And if so, can we see the system which Ten Hag has in his mind for us to do in the long term. Ideally for me, it looks like a 2-4-3-1 shape. With Onana in between the two centre-backs like this, for now, it could eventually evolve next season, but for now I would do this. And basically, get Wan-Bissaka, Kobi Mainu, Mason Mount and Diogo Dallo in line with each other in this position. 
and at times we could even push the fullbacks further up the pitch to take the opposition wingers away from us to relieve pressure. That's the strategy. But what I want us to do is use Onana in goal. Use his ability on the ball. We were all so excited when we signed him. I labelled him as a transformative signing, but we haven't seen it. Now, yes, it's because of injuries to an extent, but let's try it. Let's try and use Onana on the ball playing out from the back. We don't need centre-backs which are incredibly press-resistant because we're putting them in a system where the play is going to be in front of them most of the time. So it's more about, you know, just how they deal with that rather than having to turn. So I think it can work. Let's get Kobi Mainu into a position where his press resistance can be of use, can be of value. At the moment, he pushes too far forward, doesn't get enough touches on the ball. Let's get him to be metronomic. Get on the ball, have a lot of touches, make stuff happen, but show press resistance in this first phase. And also, I guess, another challenge for Mason Mount to really learn what he is about as a player. Can he receive the ball in these positions? Again, I don't necessarily think he is press resistant like Kobe Mainu, but I still think he's pretty good on the half turn. I think technically he's a really secure player, a good first touch and a good passer, and also an intelligent footballer, someone who understands space well. Why not get him into this position to see if it can work? I would like to see United try and persist with it. We might see errors because of it. We might concede goals because of it over the next few weeks. But again, in the league, what is there to lose? Why not try it? Why not try a more sustainable approach? Can we set something up here at the end of the season to take into the summer and beyond? Let's give it a go. In terms of beyond that, I would then like to see a slight change of shape as the side moves forward. I like the idea of sticking with Ten Hag's back three system where two of the midfielders, you know, push a little bit further forward. Can the left back tuck in? Maguire becomes the middle centre back. Kambuala becomes the right side centre back. I like the idea of that. We can keep that. So we're not asking for Ten Hag to change too much here. I also like the idea of Dallow inverting. But let's get Mason Mount pushing forward into the half space and keep Kobe Mainu again in a position where he can get plenty of touches of the ball. Again, perhaps next season as that evolves and he becomes a player who plays higher up the pitch. But for now, get him on the ball in this position. Again, try something different. Casemiro, when he plays this role, is quite direct. He looks to play the ball forward quickly. Let's get Kobe Mainu on the ball. Sorry for punching the mic. Let's get Kobe Mainu on the ball. Someone who wants to slow down, take extra touches. Let's try it. And then, let's try this. Can Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes play, again, in midfield together, but actually alongside each other? Two tens, both playing in the half spaces. Could we see that? L let's give it a go. Let's get Bruno Fernandes playing close to Marcus Rashford. We know how good those two can be when they play close together. It gives us goal output from Rashford and Bruno Fernandes, but also creativity from Bruno. And can we try this right side dynamic of Mason Mount and Ahmad? Again, let's give it a go. Ahmad is a player who naturally wants to come inside with the ball. But guess what? Mason Mount is a player with all the energy in the world to make the overlap. And we saw right at the start of the season, in fact, last summer, I'd done a video on this. When he plays on the right-hand side, he is happier to make these overlapping runs into the final third from where he looks for these crosses into the box. That could be a really nice understanding, a really nice un uh, dynamic between the two. They're both players who want to play that sort of quick two, three-touch football, quick interchanges, quick linking passing. Why not get the two of them together? Again, I would love to see us go for that approach till the end of the season. Again, the shackles are off. Try something a little bit different with the aim, essentially, of creating more chances for Rasmus Hoyland in the final third of the pitch. In terms of the video we were doing yesterday, we were talking about balance. This feels, to me, like a more balanced side. Because, again, if we do wish to split the pitch in half down the middle, I would say, particularly in midfield, we've got players on the left-hand side in Kobe Mainu, but also the right-hand side in Dallow and Mount, who can retain possession. It's more balanced. I also feel we've got creative threat from both sides of the pitch. Ahmad is creative, Mount can be creative, so can Bruno Fernandes. Perhaps the goal scoring threat is a little bit low on the right hand side, but again, it's not perfect. We're just working with what we've got. Let's try and make it happen. Let's try and make it happen. Let's also change things from a defensive point of view. This whole idea of all season long, the forward line presses high, the defence drops deep. Scrap it. Scrap it. Get our team all playing in one direction. Squeeze the team nice and high. Someone like Kambwala could allow us to do that, but also Wambasaka on the other side as well. Can we go for a more aggressive press? I'm not necessarily asking for man for man all over the pitch because I understand it. It is a risky structure to use. But can we not use some sort of hybrid pressing system where we force the opposition to play one way and then really go in from there? I feel it could work. When the opposition have the ball at goal kicks, for example, Let's press higher, let's challenge them, let's press as a team and really question how good the opposition are. Again, I want United to do that and I think so many people do. Again, it doesn't have to be man-to-man. -man. Use a hybrid pressing structure like Ten Hag likes to use, just be more aggressive with it. Again, squeeze that back line. I'm not actually even asking Ten Hag to connect the fullbacks. Quite rare, but I'm not even asking for that. Let's just commit the whole team higher, move the defensive line several yards higher up the pitch. 
and use still a similar pressing approach with the front line. Can Rasmus Hoyland be this player which sort of curves his run and forces the ball one way? Once we have done that, can we lock on? Bruno Fernandes on this midfielder in here, Mason Mount in here, Kobe Mainu in here. Again, Ten Hag can keep his man-to-man -man system if he so wishes. I'm not asking for a complete change here. I'm asking for a tinkering of the side to see what direction we can really move in in the future. What way we can really take this team. So Rasmus Hoyland kind of splitting these centre-backs, forcing them one way. We sort of then basically cut the passing angles from here, but make the pitch really small for the opposition. Squeeze over, sort of minimal width, get into their faces in these sorts of areas and challenge this player on the ball. You know, there's no obvious pass for him. He can't go to his left back because our winger is there. He can't go to his midfielders because we're there. He can't go to his winger because our fullback is there. He also can't really go long to the striker because, because we're not man for man, we've got two players at the back. So one can go tight, the other can cover. Let's reduce the options for the opposition. But whilst doing all of this, let's make sure we are compact and close to each other. So rather than the defensive line being back here, let's squeeze up. Let's get the whole team playing closer together. Again, I'm not asking Ten Hag to make a drastic change here. I'm just asking him to basically be a bit bolder with what he does with his back line. Put a bit more trust in his defenders. Because if we do that, his system, which I still think is questionable at times, has a greater chance of working because simply the opposition will have less time on the ball. So we're still actually leaving that far fullback free. But because we are more intense, because we are closer to the opposition, it doesn't matter so much because they don't have the time to play the passes. This guy can't get his head up and play the ball over here because we're right on them. Because we are right on them, we are pressing them, we are harassing them, stopping them from getting out from the back in these areas. The worst case scenario ultimately is that the ball goes backwards to the goalkeeper and then he might look for that flip over to the other side. But guess what? This is the benefit of the pressing system we have used because now if we want to, we can connect our fullback over to the press. wan can go a little bit higher. I think I moved the tactic board. There we go. wan can go a little bit higher. Now we can squeeze across like this. Because we haven't committed our fullback on the other side, he can now come across and be a covering defender. And it's just a case really of shifting the team across a little bit and now doing something similar but a little bit different on the other side of the pitch. Again, I'm not asking for drastic changes here. I would just like to see Ten Hag change approach a little bit, put a bit more faith in his players, and essentially show the fans that there's a different brand of football that we can play. Again, I think if Ten Hag was to do that, as fans, we would be so much more confident in his ability moving forward. And I think we would have a lot more trust in him to be the right man for next season. Now, there's every chance that Ten Hag doesn't feel the need to prove himself to us. And if that's the case, fair enough to the guy. But in my opinion, it would go a long way for Ten Hag, this United side, but also the fan base, to try something a little bit different now the pressure is off. Show that we can play a football, a brand of football, which is more entertaining, but also just better. You know, cut the tactics for a second. Just better. Let's just play better football than what we're currently playing. Let's stop conceding so many shots. Let's stop this idea of exposing the players to learn about them. We've done that for nine months now. We know which players are good. We know which players are bad. We've done a stream this afternoon looking at which ones we want gone. Because of the work that Ten Hag has done this season, we now know who isn't the right player anymore. But we've done that job. We don't need to continue with that now. We understand where we're at. Now let's try and build something. What do you guys reckon? To me, it sounds like a pretty good idea. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you like this idea of kind of just changing it a little bit for the final few weeks of the season? Again, now there is less pressure for results, particularly in the Premier League. Of course, the cup is different. Or do you think we should stick with what we've done so far this season? Or is there a completely different tactic which you would like to see? Whatever one the answer is, let me know in the comments down below. But apart from that, we are finished for today. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.